So today I want to talk about debugging the web. And really this is about, I want to share with you some of the work that we've been doing in the Chrome developer tools. Uh, we've been working hard on a lot of stuff and um, I want to share with you today. And just to step back for a moment, I just want to point out that, that really our goal here with the Chrome DevTools is that we want to maximize your productivity as a developer. We want to make sure that you are as effective at developing experiences for the web as you want to be. Not just that, like, I think we all enjoy web development because we get to craft the, the experience that users consume. And we get to like, bring them joy. And we want on the DevTools team to make sure that you have kind of that joy too. So we want to maximize your delight as a developer. So I'm going to be sharing with you a few things today, some big features that I'm really excited about, also some smaller things that just are smaller, subtle changes, but all targeting your experience and your workflow as a developer. So we're going to go through a few things from debugging and authoring, progressive web apps, and then some auditing stuff. And we've got a lot to go get through, so let's get right into it. Debugging. Uh, I'm talking about JavaScript debugging. And so JavaScript debugging is how we understand the execution flow of our code, and it's how we remove all the bugs that we added to our code by accident. So it's a really important thing, and we spend a lot of time doing it. So we want to make sure that it's good. So Let's start out small. This is the call stack. It's the humble call stack. Uh, this is what it uh, looked like about six months ago. And we spend so much time here that we want to make sure that uh, it's as good as possible. So we've done a little bit of UI refresh here. On the right-hand side is new call stack. Some small changes, uh, just a little bit more clean, not as much zebra striping. The asynchronous hops are a little bit more obvious. Uh, the where execution sits is very clear. And up at the top, of course, you'll see exactly why you're paused. And this is called out very clearly, because sometimes you're not really sure. Also, sometimes you're just paused on a breakpoint. It's kind of clear. But other times, you're paused on an exception. So it tells you exactly what the exception message is right up there at the top, so you don't have to go and figure out and open up the console. Or you're in a promise rejection. You're on an XHR breakpoint, a DOM breakpoint. Whatever the reason, we want to make sure it's very clear to you on why you're sitting there paused on execution. So some changes there. But also uh, on the call stack, there's some other things. Now, here I have the DevTools uh, fairly, let me bring that back. Uh, yep, uh-huh, mm-hmm, uh-huh. It's good? Ha, it's great. Um, the DevTools in this case are pretty big, you know? Like, not, it's not all the time that we have the DevTools maximized on the screen. Um, and sometimes it's all over there squished to the window, but we still want to be effective. So this is what the call stack looked like a while ago. Uh, as you kind of reduce the size of the call stack, everything gets shrinked down by function names. Like, I can't even read them anymore. So navigating between the call frames when I'm debugging is kind of rough. Uh, we decided we could make this a little bit better. So this is the experience now. So just as you have less screen real estate, we go in, we kind of stack the function name and the location. And when we run out of space, we just elide the location and take the text away from that. So making sure that whatever the screen orientation, and you know, we're always changing it, uh, it's going to be readable and usable for you. So, uh, so again, these are small changes, but important. Now, a lot of us are authoring not just in kind of plain old JavaScript, but we're using JavaScript Next, ES6, ES2016, ES whatever. And we might be using tools like Babel or TypeScript to tra transpile them down to code that can be deployed across a variety of runtimes. And I just want to point out that the DevTools works great with all these new language features. In fact, we use them ourselves. Uh, this is the DevTools inspecting the DevTools. Uh, I'm using the black DevTools to view the other one. And this is just some of our code and some of our layer profiler. Uh, we use a lot of these new language features ourselves in our JavaScript. Uh, in here is a bunch of stuff. There's promises and error functions, uh, template literals, the new array methods, uh, good stuff. And this allows us to make sure that the experience of working with these new language features, whether it's debugging or in the console, is great, uh, great for everyone who uses them. So <clears throat> the console itself is actually a really nice thing. So if you're like using uh, Babel or something to transpile, if you're like, what exactly is happening here? Just come on over to the console and try it out um, in place here. Works great with all the new features and constant let. Here in the screenshot, we can see uh, I'm using the async await. 
this stuff is great. You can toss in a little debugger statement right there and understand exactly how it's moving. Um, this is a lot of fun. So uh, while we're talking about the console, let's spend a little bit more time here and talk about the console read line. Now, the console read line is, how did I do this? Yeah, I don't, you know. OK, coming on over here. So opening it up, uh, DevTools on my favorite site, example.com. It's a good one. Uh, the console read line is this thing here that we type on. Um, and so usually we type things that you know are just uh, like fairly like just one-liners, but not all the time. Sometimes you actually want to you have a few more than just one line that you want to type out. And this has been kind of a pain before. You have to hold like Shift Enter to avoid to write in new lines. It's been kind of tough. So I'm gonna write out just top of a function, and as I hit Enter now, we just immediately say, "Oh, actually, I don't think you're done here." Now, this, uh, some folks call this smart return. In fact, Safari kind of paved the way on this one. They have this, this feature, and, and we're, uh, we really like it. It's fantastic. So now let me, let me just finish the rest of this guy. I'm just going to yeah, log out my args. I enter again. We still know that we're not done yet. I had a brace, and it's like, oh, yeah, I'll re-indent that for you back there. And I'll hit enter again, and it's like, yeah, you're done. We'll execute that. Cool. So yeah, so uh, as I had that, too, you'll see that um, we're, we, we are matching the braces too. So very clear brace matching. And in fact, this is now syntax highlighted, whereas that is uh, pretty new. Even things like multiple cursors and uh, uh, select next match, all these features that you, and these keyboard shortcuts that you use in Sublime Text or whatever, they also work here too. Uh, so some nice upgrades to the console read line. Um, now the other thing is that we use the console as a way to inspect objects and kind of understand what's going on with them. So actually having the completions as we type and explore things is really important. So on this site, uh, let's see, document dot, it's, yeah, document dot head. And I'm just going to look at child nodes real quick. Um, so as I open up the uh, square bracket, uh, I do actually see immediately <laughs> all the indices that I can use in child nodes. So I know that there's 11 child nodes, and that's kind of cool. I'm going to choose one. Um, and one pain point that's happened in the console before is that any time that you have an array and you grab something from the array, and then you hit dot, and you're like, I, am I not seeing any? I, don't, I can't. I, what is I, there? And I, I want those completions, and it didn't work. Anyways, it works now, so we're all happy. <laughs> So um, in addition to that, uh, you kind of want a little bit more power. And you've only been able to see what starts with what you typed. And so now, like, if I want to see what the content is of this child node, I might type content and then, oh, text content. Yeah, actually, that's the text content. So substring completions uh, work now, too. And in fact, the substring completions work not just here, but also in the elements panel. So in case uh, you forget uh, something like border color, uh, you can type color, and you'll eventually see where it is. All right, so some nice improvements there on the console. Again, small things, but nice. All right. Sometimes you're writing some code, and to be honest, like three lines of code isn't cutting it. You want a little bit more room. Um, and you could go over to something like JS bin, and that's great for sharing, but sometimes you just want to play around. The snippets inside of sources, it's just kind of a place where you can noodle around, try out a few lines of code, put breakpoints, try things out, execute it. Um, these are persisted into your Chrome profile. Um, in this case, I was just playing with the, the battery API, um, seeing how much battery I was discharging and how much time is left. It's cool stuff. i just save it. There's a few things, like little debug helpers that I keep around. Um, and if you Google DevTool snippets, you'll actually find a bunch of great like debug helpers and performance monitors that people have written. Just take them, save them, throw them into your snippets. It's good stuff. All right. Now, one more thing to kind of finish up debugging. Uh, yeah, so this line of code that we're looking at here, uh, asynchronous code, I got promises and some thens. Uh, this is actually a really tough thing to debug currently. Um, in fact, if I place this breakpoint here on line 16, 
I pause like before any of this, but there's really no way for me to like pause inside of my error functions and see like what's happening inside of them. And if I try and pause here, because this is chained, it just doesn't work. And that, that's not great. We want to make sure that debugging asynchronous code is as easy as debugging uh, synchronous code. So we've been working on this and thinking that there must be kind of a better way. So let's see, I'm going to open up a snippet that I have here. And yeah, yeah, OK, this is good. Um, so we've been thinking about this and working, let me bring that back, yeah, there we go, uh, working with the V8 team uh, to see if we can improve this experience. So what I have here is um, some code, and we are going to ask the GitHub API for some data. We're going to fetch it and then you know, turn it into JSON and then get some stuff and hopefully log it out. And let me just try this real quick. Um, OK, well, looks like there's a problem. Uh, not real, OK, yep, great. Problems are good. Um, now, before, it's been pretty hard to understand what's going on because, again, I could only pause in the very first line of this. But so now what I want to do is I'm going to place uh, a breakpoint here. In addition to that, We've also found all the candidates along that line of code where you can place inline breakpoints. <laughs> all right, yeah, nice. So um, now that we have that, let's see. Uh, I'm going to run this again. So what just happened is I ran it again. Right now we're paused right here at this first guy, but I'll let that continue. All right, now, cool. We're paused halfway down the line, uh, right after JSON. Now I do see that this response up here uh, is there, oh, forbidden. That's going to be fun to figure out. And I even see the return value, this promise. This is actually the return value of this call right here. Now I think I can go for, yeah, OK, yeah, go for it again. And um, well, to be honest, it looks like data here yeah, is coming back. So, the problem with this demo is that I'm hitting the GitHub API, and turns out that for whatever reason, our IP in this building has already exceeded its rate limit, <laughs> which like kind of breaks the demo. So thanks for the people that are using the GitHub API unauthenticated right now. Luckily, I have a backup piece of JSON. This is you know what the payload was. Uh, that's just sitting there. So let me just uh, you know. Uh, 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 uh. Okay. How are we looking? Let's clear off these guys. Uh, 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 uh. Uno momento. Okay. Okay. Great. So run that again. Uh, I do have. A problem, and we can inspect exactly what is going on. I kind of think I know. We go forward. It was asking for a data avatar. It doesn't exist. Avatar URL. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me finish this off so that we don't have to worry about it anymore. And uh, uno momento. All right, there we go. Avatar URL, enter. Really? What did I do? Ah, oh, ah, no. <laughs> Guys, I really, <gasps> there we go. <laughs> yeah, uh, so yeah, console image, a little known uh, thing, you know, just tosses an image into your console. Uh, why not? <laughs> okay, to be honest, the implementation is down here, and it's some, some cool <laughs> stuff, but yeah. Whew. All right. Uh, anyways, inline breakpoints. Uh, I'm really excited about this. Really introducing a much better development experience for asynchronous code and all sorts of code. Really break anywhere you need to. Huh. All right. Moving on to authoring. And we're going to start with the front end, and I'm going to head back into the browser. Uh, over here, we have a PWA um, that me and Sam Ciccone have worked on. It's called Caltrain Schedule. As you can imagine, it shows um, the schedule for the Caltrain. And now we've been developing this, um, and uh, there's always times when you want to make changes. Now, 
typical way of making changes, like uh, we can try out some new colors. And if we like them, you know, usually the method is shift uh, uh, selection and copy paste over in your editor. Now, we don't really like this, this workflow, and we think it can be better. And in previous talks, you might have heard us talk about features like workspaces. And workspaces allows you to bind your local development folder with the actual site that you're looking at in the browser, allowing you to save to disk the things that you're working on. And this is some powerful stuff. But to be honest, there's been some configuration about it, getting it set up. If you've tried it, like you know it's kind of like, is it working? I don't know. So we wanted to make sure it's really straightforward and simple. So I'm going to come back over to sources and clear this out of the way. And so in sources, we see, OK, yeah, this is the code. Uh, I have a service worker here and some uh, JavaScript and CSS. Great. Um, but I want to be able to persist the disk. So the new experience now is a lot easier. So I'm going to take actually just my development folder. This is my Caltrain schedule folder locally. I'm just going to drag and drop it here and say, yeah, you can access that. And then immediately you see a little like green uh, check marks light up. And it says, oh, yeah, the CSS of the file, yeah, that's, I know where that is. That's right on disk. And over here, I'm going to show you on the, the file system. Here's the entire folder, like my editor config and things, my service worker. But everything that is coming in from the network has a little check mark to it. So this is a nice thing, because we automatically find out for you how things map. In fact, it's not just a, uh, just the basics, but if you have a more complex setup, like you're transpiling your JavaScript or you're compiling SAS to CSS, that should work too without configuration. So we've, like, I could explain how we, you know, made it. I, to be honest, I don't. It's like magic. Um, so <laughs> things like, you know, this TypeScript, we were able to map it uh, back and forth. As long as you have a source map, for the actual uh, compiled code, we will figure out where it goes and map it so that any changes you make persist. So let's make a change or so. This title could afford to be bigger. That's nice. It's a little too strong. I'm going to change the foreground color a little bit, dial it back, get in the gray. That's good. Need some shadow. I'm going to use the new shadow editor. Mm. A little too black, but if we lighten it up, ooh, that is some classy stuff. Yeah, I'm liking that. Now, one thing that you might see right here, this green check, it knows that this CSS uh, is actually the one on disk. And if I click through um, to view it back in sources, we have the diff saying, oh, yeah, I know. You actually changed these lines right here. And if I come back over to. Uh, see my editor, or my, my, my terminal, and I just check my diff. Oh, yeah, that's the diff of the changes that I made. So automatically persists the diff. <laughs> cool. So uh, that CSS is looking good. But actually, talking about CSS, so uh, the original styles of this site, Sam actually was like pretty responsible for it. And, but I don't even know if we were like, there's like a lot of styles here, and I don't even know if we're using all of them. Like, I imagine that we've all been in this situation. You're shipping an app, and you're just like, are we even using these, these ones? Like, I'm not, I'm not going to try and remove them, because that's crazy, but I would like to know. <laughs> <clears throat> this is hard. Uh, the browser kind of knows, right? We're like, maybe we should, hmm. So actually, yeah, as of. Uh, yeah, today, in a canary near you, you might find uh, this little checkbox up here called CSS coverage. Now, I'm going to try it out and just hit record. And in fact, it's just, that's it. It's kind of done. I'm going to head back to sources. And now, in uh, the CSS, we mark on the left-hand side if these styles were never used. Um, yeah, so actually, this is pretty good. So down here at the bottom, looks like there's all this animation stuff that wasn't used. And I just want to like verify that like you know this is good. The animation is like actually these little bars that animate out. Looks like there's just two here. I wonder if I can, yeah, I'll try and trigger all of them. Dun, dun, dun. Let's just switch this over there. Yeah, that's a few animations. 
and come back. And yeah, okay, so we are using all those. Not that, but I, yeah, CSS is looking pretty good. So excited about this, because it gives us much better tools to understand like what of the code that we're shipping are we actually using? Uh, yeah, some good stuff. Okay, okay, coming back. Now, talked about authoring in the browser. A lot of us are full stack developers. We write JavaScript for the back end too. And at Google I.O., we showed some work that we've been doing to bring profiling and, and inspection and debugging to Node.js. We've been excited about this, and, uh, but there's always more work to do. Um, so let's show a little bit of that. Uh, so coming back to this Caltrain schedule, um, I've actually been working on a small little feature to get like the live position of every single train. Um, there's like an API for it, and I could get the live location. So you can see down here at the bottom of my JavaScript is uh, I'm asking my, my local server for the position of a train, and I'm just like polling for it. I've just started the feature. I'm very early on this one. <laughs> okay, so uh, let's kick off the node, right? Uh, so we'll come over here, this guy, and uh, what we can do is we can hit node dash dash inspect and the app, and whew, ignore that for a moment. We get this URL right here, and this is URL, and we can just actually copy paste it into our browser and start debugging. But in this case, it's kind of awkward because you know I already have a tab open with DevTools debugging the front end. It'd be nice to be able to like look at the back end too. So I'm actually, yeah, just going to allow this to run, but I'm going to come back over to the sources panel. And now when I open this up, in addition to the main thread and the service worker, down here is Node. And it's like, oh, yeah, you're running Node, aren't you? Do you, you want to like, debug that too? Yeah, yeah, actually, I'd be down with that. OK, good. <laughs> so now we're connected to Node. Um, and I know this because if I switch over here and I'm looking at just the node context. That error that I was getting you know, over, oof, over here is still also exploding my screen over here. So that's great. Um, OK, train is not defined, apparently. So let's see what's up. Uh, all right, so coming down, there's my app.js. This is my, my node code. And apparently, there's an error. Let's just pause on. On, on exceptions, it just paused right here. Train is undefined, right? Yes, good. And train, tra train ID, yes, mistake, my bad. Train ID is just train. Now I'm just going to hit Control S, and uh, I think that takes care of it. And we'll know if we see sending API request. Um, oh, it's paused. Who said that? <laughs> they get like an, like two extra points in the quiz. OK, paused. <laughs> All right, yeah, yeah, good sending API. Yes, OK. Um, and in fact, coming back to my uh, other context, my page, um, I went from a bunch of, yeah, 500s internal service errors to 200s. And that's what you like to see. Oh, good, OK. So we're really excited about this because this allows us, yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> They got to clap on the 200s. Uh, we're excited about this because this allows us to use a single dev tools and speak to both the front end and the back end at the same time, keeping your attention in one place while managing multiple contexts. It's just good. Whew. All right, moving on. We've heard a bit about progressive web apps today. And there's some nice tools in the dev tools to tackle that. And I'll briefly just review some of them. Over in the application panel, there's some great stuff. First up. The manifest view will tell you what's in your manifest. And in fact, if, if the browser finds anything that's like not so sure and it, it issues a warning or an error, you'll see them sh shout it out right up here at the top. <clears throat> then the service worker pane tells you everything. The state allows you to manipulate your service workers. And then I really like this. The clear storage pane allows you to not only unregister your service worker one, with one click, but take care of your cache storage, your app cache, your, any of your local storage. Just wipe it out and kind of start fresh. I use that all the time. I do want to spend a little bit more time on the service worker panel itself. And there's two things that I want to point out for you, really helpful tips when you're doing this debugging. Up at the top are some checkboxes. 
The checkbox in the middle, update on reload. This is a super helpful guy. You can think of it kind of as like um, a disable cache, but for the service worker JavaScript itself. Like, it's great for when you're working on sw.js, the service worker.js, and you're just making changes to it. And you want to make sure that you load in the new version every time. It'll just make sure that as you reload, it pulls in the new version. You don't have to worry about some of the caching stuff. The other checkbox, bypass for network, basically says, hey, uh, service worker, I re you love to like intercept requests and like serve it from the cache and all this stuff, but like I'm working on my site right now and I'm like updating my styles and my pages JavaScript, and so I really don't want to like you to be serving things from the cache and intercepting. So it's just like just chill with the network stuff. So this allows you to just iterate on your pages uh, content, your styles and JavaScript without the service worker getting in the way. So definitely check those out. And as you keep on, uh, as you work with these tools um, and 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 find things that are like hmm, making you question stuff, feel free to just holler at us and, and ask us if there's a better way that the tools can represent what's going on, because we'd love to make sure we can help. Now, there's a lot of things in doing progressive web apps that you kind of have to keep track of, and especially if it's your first time just getting your, your manifest and your service worker set up the right way is a little tricky. And so we've thought of been working on uh, better ways for us to understand how, if we're hitting all the right marks and if there's anything else that we can do to make sure that what we're building is great. A lot of that work and that investment has gone into a project called Lighthouse. And Lighthouse is a, is a guidebook for helping you turn a web app into a great progressive web app. And, and more than that, it, it analyzes you know, any web page and any website and uh, not only collects performance metrics, but helps identify all sorts of developer best practices that you could be doing and making things better. So like, as an example, it audits for a number of different things as far as um, can the user be prompted to add it to home screen? Uh, does it have a custom splash screen? But other things like, are you using event, passive event listeners when you should? Are you avoiding mutation events and document write? Uh, and over 40 different audits checking for just developer excellence. On the other side, uh, it also does a great job of having uh, performance metrics that capture kind of the user perceived performance in the most accurate way possible. So you've heard a little bit about first meaningful paint and time to interactive, and Lighthouse uh, measures those and helps give helps illuminate what is actually happening when things are slow. So Lighthouse is available as a Chrome extension. You can see a little bit of it here. Uh, let's see over here. Uh, yeah, I can run it from the command line. It'll just kick off a new version of Chrome itself um, and just run all of its tests, the same tests there. Um, and this works well. Lighthouse is just a node module. And in fact, a number of other tools are already using Lighthouse and building on top of it. Uh, so feel free to, to check it out like that. It works well uh, with a headless Chrome in a continuous integration environment. So if you want to set up regression tests for performance or audits, you can definitely do that. Um, and the other thing is that the, we've really been happy with how uh, ch doing these checks to see, like, is this along the right path? This has been working out for us. But we want to make sure that it's even more available. So I want to show you another new thing. I'm going to come over to our Caltrain schedule. And I'm here in the DevTools. And we're like, maybe we should have it available not just uh, here as a Chrome extension, but what if let's open this up in more tools and we have a new Audits 2.0? So this Audits 2.0 is powered by Lighthouse. So as I, I'll just make this template. Yep, there we go. So I'm just going to go ahead, and this is using the same Lighthouse that is in the extension, the command line, running all the same checks. Um, so it's looking for um, things like usage of document write, uh, usage of uh, blocking style sheets, um, and helping you understand what's going on. So pretty soon, it'll give me a report. I'll be able to browse that. Yeah, yeah, OK, looks pretty good. Fast, site is fast. Good job, Sam, OK. But scrolling down, this, was, this is interesting. Check this out. Uh, site opens external uh, links using rel no open. And in fact, there's, we have two links on the site which are external, open in a new window, and not using this guy. You'll have to read about this. And this, like, I saw this, and I was like, honestly, we really need to do this. So this is super. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to fix that, like, right after I get off stage. Um, but yeah, I encourage you to check this out. And the nice thing here is that 
Um, because this is using Lighthouse, uh, Lighthouse is just sitting on GitHub. It's a bunch of JavaScript. So if there's anything that you're interested in auditing for or just want to check, just please come by, drop by. We've had a bunch of people collaborating on the project so far. Um, so come check it out. Talk to us if you have any ideas. We just love to, to work on it with you. So what do we see here today? A uh, few things. We walked through looking at stronger debugging with modern JavaScript, and I got to show the inline breakpoints. Oof, love it. The parallel debugging with Node.js in the browser at the same time, a single window. Uh, the persistence saving to disk really painlessly, automatical mapping between everything. Uh, the CSS coverage to find what CSS you are not using. Um, and new auditing functionality available in all the right places. Uh, if you're not, follow us on Twitter. Our docs are there. And just, yeah, please grab Canary. Um, turn on some of the DevTools experiments if you want. And if anything, you know, bugs, certainly, but even just feedback or ideas, go to CRBug. It'll be like, do you want to report a bug? Don't file feature requests, but just ignore that. And just like <laughs> file a feature request or just like, hey, guys, what about, you know, what do you think? That's fine. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, that's it for me. Thank you very much.